So, um, welcome. Um, uh, I have the honors to uh, start off the day, um, or the evening, or the late night, or uh, the afternoon, or whatever it is for you, um, for the API documentation developer experience track. And um, we had, um, um, or my colleague, uh, Katalin, who's been working a lot in the background organizing um, this track, uh, she had somebody prepared um, to do the first slot, but then um, because of internal reasons, they were not able to, to do the presentation because they didn't get approval. Um, so I jumped in uh, with a talk um, with a topic that's really dear to my heart. Uh, and that's also somewhat an, uh, like an introduction for the, uh, the second talk that we're going to have um, from Kathleen Dero, um, <clears throat> and it's a, it's a, it's about a topic that um, yeah that we've been doing a lot of thinking and research about this year um, through the COVID season <laughs> or seasons, and um, uh, that that has been you know growing and developing uh, as part of the API resilience podcast uh, that that I organize but but first a very short introduction of myself I'm Christophe Antomme I'm CEO, CEO of Pronovix uh, we're a consultancy that's uh, specialized in developer portals I'll have a one short slide uh, about the company in a moment um if there's any questions uh, during my talk or during any other part of the, the track, uh, feel free to drop it into the, the chat. Um, and uh, yeah, very much looking forward to, to interacting with all of you uh, globally today. Uh, <clears throat> so, oh, uh, wrong screen. Uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, that's interesting. Let me restart that. No, it's still out of screen. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll ignore that, um, or please ignore that. So the title of this talk is The Interface Economy, um, The True Potential of APIs. And it's something that um, I've, been, I've been thinking a lot about, um, uh, just trying to double check that I'm really thinking the right things, because this is going a little bit against the, the common practice and the common thoughts in the community. And um, I want to get feedback. And um, uh, it's, it's based on a lot of discussions that we've had uh, on the Resilience Podcast, as I've been, uh, I said before, the API Resilience Podcast. By the way, if you're interested in the philosophy of APIs uh, and you want to hear some, some interviews with some of the, the um, uh, most well-known people in the API community and, and people that are doing really cool stuff uh, with their developer portals and their do API documentation, uh, go and check it out. It's on Spotify. Um, um, well, just Google it and you'll, you'll find it. And um, um, But what we've, what we've seen through those conversations is that um, it's not always very easy to get an API program really successful. And really successful, I mean that um, uh, key leadership is completely convinced that this is the right way to spend a um, considerable amount of money that it takes to do APIs well um, at scale. And um, uh, so, and, and, and I've got a bit of a contrarian view on this that I would like to share with you. But first, a very short introduction. As I said, uh, we're Pronovix. We're a consultancy that's fully dedicated to developer portals. As far as we know, um, um, please do tell us if we're wrong. <laughs> but as far as we know, we're the only ones that have fully dedicated ourselves to developer portals in the world. Uh, meaning that um, we um, we have a product and we also uh, that we use to build uh, portals for our customers. Uh, so we're not just a SaaS. Uh, so we're not a SaaS company. We're also not a web agency, but we are like a developer consultancy company. That's enough about the, the intro. So to get started, why is it so hard to build a successful API program? Um, we, we have a lot of customers that, um, that are doing pretty well with their API program. They're quite successful. They have uh, initial take up um, on, on their APIs. And, um, you know, like looking at all of it, it it, it looks pretty good, and and they they should be able to say to claim success and say like you know we've done well we're good we're on the top of the world. 
But then when I talk with them, what I realize is that often there's still that kind of feeling like, you know, is this is is this all of it? Like, is you know, isn't there more? Like, when when is it like really going to start really really working? And um, and I think that this feeling is actually uh, very well not a dangerous, but I think it's it's born from a misconception that is resulting in organizations not necessarily doing the the right things that they need to do. And I'll explain this uh, throughout this talk. Um, because I think what what happens is that we're emulating the wrong examples. Um, basically, I think what's happening is that um, a lot of the corporate world, uh, and I'm not right now. I'm talking about corporate API programs, existing companies that have started doing APIs um, because they see the value and and they want to be part of it, and and they. Um, they think that it's going to help them to grow their business. And uh, so what they've done is they've gone through the API community. They've been listening to all these amazing talks at the API days and, uh, and, and a bunch of other events. And they've gone home. It's like, oh, we're going to become an API platform. It's going to be, going to be awesome. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be like the next stripe for, you know, something, something. The thing is that, um, by trying to by by taking them as their as the example, um, I think we're stepping into a trap. Uh, we've seen this on the Developer Portal Awards that there's very different different kinds of programs out there. Like there's the the API natives, the companies that have been built around an API, and that's the only thing they do. Oh, um, um, but to replicate or to try to replicate their business model you almost have to like throw out all of your other business and just completely focus on becoming an API program and for, for um, uh, an API platform uh, where you're selling APIs and access to APIs to developer audience. And I think, um, uh, I think that's, that's a very limited view on, on, uh, this world, uh, because for large enterprise companies, they're not going to throw their away their existing business. They're not going to just turn everything around and and fully focus on this one thing, because they have a lot of other business that's already going and where they're quite successful already. And I think that when we try to replicate the business models of API natives, um, as uh, like where we select, okay, that's the goal. We're going to try to fly. It's kind of like. Um, sticking wings on your back and, and hoping that you're going to stay in the air. Um, and I think that, and this is maybe contrarian. Um, so I do believe that there's a lot of value in existing companies trying to build API platform businesses for sure. That's a, that's a good idea. But I think the expectation that this is the thing that is going to make your digital transformation succeed, that this is the only business model that is right for you, I think is problematic. Um, because um, for, for a lot of organizations, APIs are a, a side business or a complementary business to their existing business. Uh, for a lot of organizations, developers are not uh, the primary at, uh, target. Um, uh, most organizations will never be able to charge money from developers uh, for API access. So trying to trying to emulate Stripe and Twilio and you know companies like that, I think is be beside the point. So what is then the true goal of an API program? Um, I think that this is what companies are doing. I got a more complex answer, but I've tried to. Um, wheedle it down so that it can fit into 20 minutes uh, as, like, as like a primer for this track. I think the key thing that we're doing is that we are um, um, we are um, reorganizing the way information flows in our organizations so that um, teams can do agile at scale and a couple of other things. Um, but I think that, that that's like one of the core things. And um, uh, very short, I think that what, what we need to go through um, to be able to succeed here is go through these um, steps in the process where in the first phase, you know, you learn to work with APIs and you get your organization to use APIs. Second stage, uh, you're treating your APIs as API products. Um, the third stage, um, you 
have the whole org, like all of your developers are looking for existing uh, APIs uh, on your developer portal, um, um, because that I think that's that's what really shows that you've reached a, a real API program. That the behavior has changed from oh, I'll quickly whip up a database and and make like a service for my application, and um, you know, and, and do that where to, okay, let me go and look, maybe there's already an API that exists for this purpose and I can use that instead of building my own. And then I think the last stage, and I think this is where the real value lies for most of um, most of the organizations that are trying to do um, um, develop uh, like APIs, is the interface program, is when uh, we go, um, where, where regular people also start looking for existing interfaces rather than um, asking a developer or asking a person to provide that service that they're trying to do. Um, yeah, so what does that mean? Uh, like uh, interfaces, I mean APIs, SDKs, um, but also apps, uh, widgets, QR codes, Postman collections, files, Kafka queues, you know, the whole, whole shebang, all of that stuff uh, that provides access to the information backbone of your organization. Um, and I think that's how um, interfaces can help to equalize API access so that regular folks can also use uh, the power of APIs like we're already doing with our devices and our apps and so on. But then what, is, what does that mean for APIs? What is the role then for APIs in organization? I think the way that we should be looking at APIs as the information highways, this big infrastructure project that's going to massively change the economies of our business. Um, just like um, these massive uh, highway initiatives uh, that happened um, all over the world, um, um, you know, for in the Western world quite a while ago, um, now um, with, um, um, you know, some other countries, uh, like a lot of initiatives still ongoing. I think this is something similar that we're doing here where there is not per se value uh, in the use of the uh, highway network itself, but the economy that it creates and the new opportunities that it creates, and uh, it's just massive, massive amplifier for your business. Um, so I think that the true value of APIs is not in making integrations per se, but it is in what you can do with those APIs and what, what the end result is. And we had uh, Mehdi, um, uh, on, on the API Resilience podcast. Uh, and he said something really interesting where he said, um, people don't look for APIs, they look for abilities. And I think that's, um, uh, that is true, not just for developers, also for regular people. And this comes me, brings me to, to this other controversial opinion that I've been building up is um, I believe that by all fishing in this small pond of developers, um, like if, if we all, like everybody that uh, does APIs, if we're all trying to get people to, like, you know, if we're all trying to get developers to use our APIs and we're all like trying to make a business out of that and make money from those developers, like it, it's, there's so much competition that it's, it becomes this, um, you know, people start behaving weird with developers. There's like, we need to be extra careful because like there are the special, special people and, uh, you know, like uh, they're kind of weird and, and we need to treat them differently than regular people. And, um, and I think that is actually dangerous uh, because first of all, it's kind of patronizing for developers. It's kind of like, um, because you, you know, we're, it means that you probably don't think, it, it means a lot of different things. Um, I think that the key thing is that we should be looking at developers not as unicorns, but as pioneers, the, the explorers that go out there and that make new stuff happen, that go figure out like, where are we gonna put our highway and, and what, are, what are the new potentials, the new markets, the new opportunities that are out there um, that we can uh, go and, and leverage uh, and build our business on. And um, uh, that also means that, um, you know, we still need to give developers really, really good gear because when you're out there in the wild trying to figure out new new business and new places that, that your business could go, um, you know, you need proper gear because if you don't have good gear, you're not going to do this job very long. Um, uh, but you, you know, it, it's a different thing. Like 
unicorns versus pioneers. I, I, I hope this is um, not insulting itself, right? But I, I think uh, uh, this is what I think we need to do. Uh, and then that means that APIs for a lot of organizations uh, are primarily exploration devices um, um, that help to discover new interface opportunities and then also become these highways that help to um, monetize those interface opportunities where not necessarily the API itself is, is the, the way that you're making money, but it's like a, a contributing factor through a bunch of different, very diverse business models. We're going to have um, uh, Katrien Hazel later in, in the track uh, talking about some some something very close to this. Uh, like some of the inspiration for these ideas um, come come from her work uh, and and some of the things that she said in in um, KBC's uh, efforts um, to uh, to not just target software developers but also to target business developers, which I for me blew my mind. Um, we also have her as we had her as one of our guests on uh, the uh, API Resilience podcast, so you can you can listen to. Um, some of her ideas, um, if, if you go check that out. And um, like, and I also would re like encourage you to go and check out their dev portal, um, which has this uh, no code business solutions for um, business developers that I think is really, that are really, really fascinating. Um, so they have uh, like one example is this QR codes that helps you to create a loan uh, journey. Um, without having to do any development at all. So if you're a small bicycle shop owner, you don't have money to pay for a developer to create uh, an application integration. If you only own one shop, it just doesn't make any sense. But you could create a QR code and, and integrate it into your sales journey. Um, and, um, you know, and, and I think that's, that's fascinating. But then what does that mean for the role for developer portals? What, what are they then? Uh, I think that's, uh, I've, I've been saying this for a while, but I think it's becoming more and more I think about it actually becomes more true is that developer portals are interfaces for your interfaces. Um, they're a place where you, you go and figure out like what are all the possible ways to interact with this organization in an automated way. So and I think what we want to achieve is that rather than like if, if you're trying to build some sort of relationship or if you're trying to interact with an organization, rather than to have the reflex to go figure out on, I don't know, on, on the marketing side, um, what the possibilities are, then maybe more and more people will start looking like, oh, actually what I'm trying to do sounds like something that they do a lot. So probably they'll have some sort of automation for that. Let's figure out if there's a portal that allows me to do that, where I can have an interface to, to have that journey that I'm looking for uh, without having to you know, deal with a with a person necessarily. Uh, maybe that's nice. Uh, like in some cases, actually, um, people can add a lot of value when there's like a special case. But this way we can like kind of like the ticketing offices in um, um, under underground stations. Uh, you know, you have the automated ticket systems for the people that know how it works. And you have the people that help the tourists that don't understand how this whole thing works. and. And, and then people can self-select, like, do they take the automated route or do they take the, the, the human interaction route where there's, um, like, it takes a little bit more time, there's, um, but there's higher touch and a more deeper experience. And all of this, I'm trying to boil down into a manifesto. Um, uh, if you're excited about anything I said, um, or if you, very strongly disagree with anything I say. Like, um, I hope I'll see it in, in the questions. Um, but uh, otherwise, um, if, if you want to be part of this, this journey and, and you, you have something to, to add to this story, uh, I'd love to get you involved in, in the Interface Manifesto, the ideas that will bring together a bunch of people to kind of formulate this and then uh, bring it out to the wider world so that we can change the way business works and and hopefully for the better so that um you know we can we can let machines do the automated parts and let humans do the the, the high value high touch parts uh, so that we don't have to force people to necessarily do routine jobs all the time uh where, where you know it's it's not all that interesting because there's less interaction that's it so are there any questions let, oh, let me have a look um so there's some 
there's a lot of stuff. Um, so um, for the next talks, I'll be able to, to prepare this a little bit more up front. <laughs> so, uh, oh, that's the event stage. It's the wrong one. So the stage one. Okay. Um, yes. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, uh, J Jeremy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I, uh, yeah, that's true. I, I think... But how how does this resound with you? Is this um, is is this something that other people are also seeing, or is this like new, uh, or does this like the uh, um, is this something worth making a manifesto about to like change the way we think and like and, and rally people around so we can like go and convince our managers that. Uh, they should be spending money on APIs, not just because they think that they're going to make uh, a ton of cash from from uh, the developer community, but because they can actually see the the, the long term value uh, and the eventual ROI uh, that this infrastructure will do. Any any uh, thoughts or ideas on that? Yeah. It's it's hard without a moderator, right? <laughs> now I can have like a conversation with myself, like, huh, what do you think? No, I think, um, yeah, I, I think the next talk, uh, Kathleen will talk a little bit more about um, something in this direction, and then um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll ask her questions uh, also based on what's coming up from from the uh, the audience. Did you already know about the um, uh, API Resilience podcast? Have you heard? Have you heard of that? I'll I'll leave it here. Um, drop an, an answer in the the chat uh, if you did or if you didn't. Uh, I'll actually I'll put it in here. Um, I'm gonna get the link. Even show you. I have two more minutes, um, so I'll quickly show you. This is a podcast. Um, so we, um, yeah, a lot of really, really good talks. Um, it, I, I think so. We started with the name API Resilience because um, I wanted to give. 